Good afternoon, it's Setter guys. This is Manga by Volume, uh, back again with another haul video. This time for the month of May 2020. Um, gotta start out with the manga. Uh, I did. This is kind of like a half and half kind of month, I guess. Um, so we got some manga and we got some uh, some Western comics and graphic novels to go through. Uh, so we're gonna start with. Some Shuzo Oshimi stuff. Um, I picked up the next two volumes that are out for Inside Mari. Um, this is kind of, I mean, just like all Shuzo Oshimi books, this is kind of a messed up series. Uh, the art's great, though. And uh, these Inside Mari volumes are put out by uh, Dempa. Um, and they got the, uh, the cool little... French flaps and such. Um, but yeah, Inside Mari is about... Um, it's it's kind of like a, a twist on the whole gender swap trope. Um, kind of like a Freaky Friday type thing, but with the usual uh, Shuzo Oshimi tropes of uh, dealing with uh, high schoolers going through puberty. Yeah. Pretty good though. I, I actually read this series um, before it started getting physical volumes. Um, Crunchyroll. I don't know if they still have like their manga app or whatever, but they used to have um, a bunch of manga up for to to read for free if you had a uh, Crunchyroll subscription, and they had all of this series. So I read it there and have been collecting the volumes as they come out. Um, but speaking of Shuzo Oshimi, uh, a new Shuzo Oshimi series has uh, started releasing um, from Vertical, and that is Blood on the Tracks. Um, I think the uh, the Japanese name kind of translates a little differently. I read a bit of this um, through various uh, manga reading sites before it got an English release, um, and again... It's pretty messed up. Uh, this one is, is kind of dealing with um, like an abusive mother-son relationship. There's kind of it kind of goes into incesty type stuff, um, but it never really explicitly does that. It's more just about a extremely manipulative mother and her poor her poor son. Um, yeah, this was put out by Vertical Comics. Um, it's a pretty good volume, I think. The art's very good as usual with Oshimi. Uh, what kind of what kind of sucks with Vertical is that their their manga sizes are kind of all over the place. So now my my Shuzo Oshimi section on my shelf is a little wonky, but that's fine. Uh, next up is a series that I have uh, just recently dived into. Um, that is Drifting Dragons, put out by Kodansha. And uh, Drifting Dragons is a kind of fantasy adventure type manga um, about this this group of drakers they're called, and they basically hunt dragons for a living, and they they sell like the meat and the the oils and stuff uh, from the dragons that they find. And uh, I read Volume One through Comicsology and decided to pick up what's currently out for the series. So here's Volume Two. Volume 3, and Volume 4, and uh, as you could probably tell by the covers, this is a beautiful looking series, and uh, the art inside it is gorgeous as well, um, really captures that that adventure feel, um, the, the uh, character design is beautiful, all the characters are really distinct, and uh, their, pal their 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 personalities all shine through with their character designs, and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it very much. Um, kind of gives me a similar feel to the next book I'm going to talk about, which is Witch Hat Atelier Volume Five. Uh, this is probably my current favorite series put out by Kodansha, and uh, yeah, I just. I love it. If if you're like into like Harry Potter and that kind of that kind of thing, um, Witch Hat Atelier is just an absolutely beautiful, super fun series about a group of witches, um, just 
learning learning their craft <laughs> and uh yeah it's it's a lot of fun it's um the story so far it, it, it kind of goes into like dark places here and there but for the most part it's super wholesome and uh non-violent like the the characters they really try to like when they're when, when they're confronted with like a a mythical monster or something like that they they usually opt for for a uh a more friendly approach and it yeah it gets really creative and i am loving the series so far the world building in which had atelier is uh some of the best i've seen in manga i like i like it i hope it gets an anime that would be really cool um and last up for the manga um this is a book that i've been excited about for a while this is pokemon adventures the collector's edition Volume 1, uh, this is a nice, thick uh, paperback put out by Viz. Um, I wish they were doing hardcovers, like with Full Metal Alchemist, but uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of like that Viz signature size of book, uh, which is it's still great. And this collects volumes 1 through 3. Now, I already have, um, I don't think you can see it, but on the shelf behind me there is the, uh, the first box set, which has 1 through 7. So, it's, I believe it's going to be three volumes per book. I hope they go into the Johto stuff. That would be really cool. And maybe even farther past that. Um, this is how I will be collecting the series from now on. I'm not sure if I'll get rid of my current box set or not. Um, something that does kind of bug me. So, I love seeing the art in this oversized-ish format. Uh, but the problem is, and you can kind of tell on video here... Um, the pages are kind of thin, and the art bleeds through. It's not super noticeable, like I've definitely seen worse, but it is a little disappointing. Which is why I really wish they had opted for something more along the lines of what the uh, the Full Metal Alchemist uh, hardcovers have. which With like the glossy paper and stuff, but yeah. Um, still happy about the release. I think it's definitely worth picking up. Um, I've, I've been with this series for years and years since I was a kid uh, when Viz was originally putting out the uh, the single issues of Pokemon Adventures uh -huh. and uh, yeah I, I absolutely love this story if you're a fan of Pokemon um, this tells a better Pokemon story than the anime ever has and uh, it's the best best Pokemon story out there I think but yeah that does it for the manga uh, now, moving on to the Western comics I picked up uh, this month. We're going to start out with a pretty big one, and that is Frank Miller's Big Damn Sin City. Um, this thing is enormous. This is uh, kind of like an absolute-sized book. It is, I believe, about 1,300 pages or so, and it collects the entirety of Frank Miller's famous series, Sin City. Uh, it's all in black and white. I haven't opened it just yet. Um, but I've been reading a lot of uh, Frank Miller stuff, and I've been reading a lot of crime stuff. And I feel like this was a, a really good book to uh, to pick up, and I'm excited to dive into it eventually. Oh, man. But yeah, just lugging this thing around. Uh, probably give me some back issues or something. But yeah. Um, I love Frank Miller, um, or at least old Frank Miller. Um, I've been reading his, uh, I, I read Daredevil Born Again recently. Yeah, there's Daredevil. And, um, it's probably my favorite superhero story ever told. And, yeah. So next up, uh, we have, uh, Peter Cannon Thunderbolt. Um, uh, written by Kieran Gillen, with art by, uh... I'm probably butchering this name, but uh, Kaspar Wingard, I believe it is. And uh, this book was um, really fun. I, I ended up reading it through Comixology at first, and then I found out later that they had this uh, this beautiful oversized hardcover for it. And um, yeah, it's kind of like a uh, an ode or a continuation to uh, Frank or Alan Moore's Watchmen. And you can see that in a lot of ways, um, most notably 
is of course that the main character of uh, Peter Cannon is actually the um, Charleston, I think it's called Charleston character uh, that Ozzy Mandias was based on. Um, originally, Alan Moore wanted to use these characters uh, when DC had the rights to them, but uh, for some reason they wouldn't let him touch them because they had just bought them and they didn't want Alan Moore to like mess them up or whatever, which is a little ridiculous, but um, yeah, Kieran Gillen takes that original character and basically makes an entire story where he is the hero. Um, and it's kind of set after an alternate version of himself pulls the same exact scheme that Ozymandias did in Watchmen, where he uh, fakes an alien invasion to try to get the world to uh, collaborate, I guess. And it even it even throws in the, um, the line where it's like, I already did it 30 minutes ago or something like that. Uh, but yeah, the, the art here is absolutely gorgeous. Um... And as you can see, it kind of plays with the nine panel grid a bit. Um, not every page, but there is definitely a lot of nine panel grid love in this book. And uh, what I what I like about it, it's like it's a dimension hopping kind of story. And there's one point where uh, where the main character, where, where Peter goes into like kind of a an indie comics world and the art style reflects that and it's it's just a really fun read all the way through and uh yeah if, if you could pick up either this hardcover or just any any way to read it really um it's definitely worth it although the hardcover does have some nice stuff like uh like full um the full pitch that Karen Gillen used uh, when pitching it to Dynamite. Um, it's got a lot of uh, a lot of art. It's a pretty good amount of back matter for a book this size, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I I absolutely love it, and I look forward to reading it again uh, with the hardcover. But yeah, next up is another book that I was very excited to pick up which is the Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1, written by Jeff Lemire, one of my favorite comics writers, with art by Dean Ormston, who uh, I hadn't really heard of before uh, reading this, to be honest, but uh, Black Hammer has absolutely made me fall in love with Dean Ormston's art. And, uh... Yeah, the first Library Edition comes with... The first two volumes of Black Hammer, including um, two issues that weren't collected in the first two volumes of the trades. But yeah, the uh, after you take the dust jacket off, it's actually the same exact um, cover design all around, including the spine. So I don't really understand why there was a dust jacket, but you know, whatever. But yeah, uh, Black Hammer, I talked a little bit about it. I didn't really touch on it too much, but Black Hammer is about... A, uh, a sort of found family of superheroes that end up getting trapped on this, uh, this, in this farm town um, after defeating a villain known as the Anti-God. And uh, it kind of dives into their, all, the, all the characters' backstories um, and what, what they were doing before they got sent to this farm, and it deals a lot with uh, how they've kind of acclimated to this strange uh, environment. Um, there's a lot of like family drama, which Jeff Lemire has always excelled at. And uh, it's a great read overall. Um, yeah, and, and this library edition is absolutely beautiful. Um, there is some art by some other artists in here, including um, David Rubin, who... Uh, is actually doing a Kickstarter right now with Jeff Lemire and Matt Kent um, for a uh, a new like sci-fi crime noir thing. It's co Cosmic Detective, yeah. Um, and uh, 
it looks really cool. And uh, judging by the art that I've seen from Dave Rubin in this book, I'm definitely excited to check that out as well. Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1. I'm excited for the rest of these to come out too. But yeah, next up is uh, kind of a blind buy for me. Um, so with um, Black Hammer and Peter Cannon, I still had like seven bucks or so uh, that I needed in order to get the free shipping on in-stock trades. And I thought, ah, what the hell, I'll just find like a cheap little book I've been curious about um, and throw that in there to get the free shipping. The one I kind of decided on was The Milkman Murders by Joe Casey with art by Steve Parkhouse. I haven't read anything by Joe Casey, and I, I've never seen Steve Parkhouse's art. I've heard of Joe Casey, at least. Um, but yeah, it's something that I kind of have seen in like other people's halls and stuff, and I've been curious about it. I It's a complete blind buy for me. I, th I thought it would just be like a crime story about maybe like a serial killer in a small town and in a way that's kind of what it is but it, it really kind of dives more into uh, what Joe Casey calls in his uh, little forward in the book suburban horror and uh, it is definitely that and to be honest I, I, I read this last night and uh, just kind of on a whim and I I hated it I, I despise this book to be honest um, it's disgusting it's uh, it's not like I don't know the art well at first like it, it kind of didn't sit too well with me um, it kind of reminds me of something you might see in like mad magazine or something uh, Eventually, by the end of it especially, I kind of did grow to enjoy this art. Because um, it, it... Steve Parkhouse does a really good job at, at representing the horror that Joe Casey has written into this book. And... But the problem with that is that... Uh, it does a lot of things that I would consider tasteless um, just for shock value and if you're kinda I guess sensitive to those kinds of things I cannot recommend this book and even if you're not I still can't recommend this book uh, cuz this I don't know it it's like all the worst parts of a Stephen King book without any of the good parts of a Stephen King book is, is how I'd describe it I guess um if you're curious check it out I guess but I I honestly can't recommend it yeah moving on to a, a, something on a bit lighter note uh, this is a uh, DC release that I've been waiting for for quite a while uh, this is one of my favorite books that I've ever read period and um, happy to have it in this edition. It is the Day Tripper Absolute Edition, um, written and drawn by Fabio Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. Um, two fantastic creators who have worked on a lot of cool series in the past, and um, there is a bit of controversy with this book. Um, supposedly, they stole the idea from two of their students um i don't really know how true that is and uh I, i'm just trying to take this at like face value i read this a while back and it touched me dearly uh i yeah it's it's i, I fell in love with this um it basically goes through the life of our main character i forget his name at the moment um and uh he he dies several times throughout the series and it just kind of explores his entire life um and it's it's a beautiful book and obviously you can tell by the cover here on the absolute it is a beautiful book like the uh the art here if i can take it out of the slipcase 
um, is honestly breathtaking. Um, it's got like a there's a lot of like watercolors and such, um, and it's just such a beautiful creation all throughout. And it's the kind of book that you'll read and. Well, well, it is sad at certain points, by the end of it, I don't know, I just felt nostalgic, I guess, uh, and, and, yeah, this, this warm, this, uh, this, this book kind of holds you in a warm embrace throughout, while also being really thought-provoking, and I just loved it, yeah. Um, and of course, as with all the DC Absolute Editions, although I don't own any except for this one, um, the, the, the back matter here is really good. It's got a bunch of like sketches, um, it's got some script stuff, uh, which is always cool as someone who wants to eventually maybe write for comics, uh, it would be, it's, this kind of thing is, is helpful and insightful, and just, it's really cool getting kind of a, a look, an insight into the comic creation process. Um, but yeah, Day Tripper, Absolute Edition, beautiful book, beautiful release put out by DC Comics, and uh, oh, there is, I guess, a little controversy with this release even because DC cut their Vertigo line, which this originally released under back in the day, and uh, now it's got the DC Black Label icon there, even though it's it came out before DC Black Label was a thing. And I think it's um, a bit revisionist of them to uh, try to label all their Vertigo releases as Black Label now. I don't really like it. I know a lot of people don't like it. I think it's weird, and that there's no reason for it, but what can you do? So yeah, that, that does it for the haul. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I kind of got rambly here a bit, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, see you guys next time. Take care.